Hello and welcome to the lecture on Lighthouse Project at Indore. My name is Shailesh Agrawal, Executive Director, Building Materials and Technology Promotion Council, and I'm going to educate you all through this presentation about the field level implementation of innovative construction system being used in this Lighthouse project, including design bases, materials, manufacturing, structural drawings, detailing, and actual site photographs explaining the different construction stages. The outline of my presentation is as follows. Starting from Global Housing Technology Challenge India and Lighthouse Projects, I will explain you technology in terms of various structural elements, namely foundation system, structural system, uh, floor uh, slash roof slab system, and wall panels, uh, followed by construction activities at site. Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Government of India, organized Global Housing Technology Challenge India uh, on 2nd and 3rd March 2019, in which a Construction Technology India Expo was organized, uh, which was inaugurated by Honorable Prime Minister of India. The basic objective of Global Housing Technology Challenge India was to identify, evaluate, and shortlist proven demonstra demonstrable uh, technologies for mass housing which can help build maximum number of houses in minimum time and minimum cost. Through the challenge, uh, we could create a basket of 54 uh, such technologies, which are broadly classified into these six broad categories, which are shown in this slide, uh, namely precast concrete construction, 2D and uh, 3D, light gauge steel structure system, and pre-engineered steel structure system, prefabricated sandwich panel system, monolithic concrete construction system and a stained place formwork system. In Indore, uh, we are using a prefabricated sandwich panel system. And through this presentation, I would be explaining you this prefabricated uh, sandwich panel system. Before getting into Indore, let me just briefly tell you uh, about the six lighthouse projects which are being um, implemented at present and uh, in six states of India uh, at these six places. Uh, all these projects are using six uh, different uh, technologies uh, uh, under these six broad categories, which I just uh, explained you. And the structural configuration also varies from six story to uh, 14 story. In Indore, um, uh, we are constructing 1,024 houses um, in a still plus uh, eight story configuration. Uh, the indoor project, um, uh, if you see, this is the layout. Um, uh, the total plot area is uh, around 41,000 square meter, and uh, out of which 10% is kept as a green. Uh, there are eight blocks in S plus eight configuration with, uh, with 1,024 houses. Uh, uh, along with basic and uh, social infrastructure. If you look at the two typical flow, floor plan, you will see that there are 16 dwelling units at each floor of the building block with provisions of uh, staircase wells and uh, lift wells. Have a look at the dwelling unit plan. Uh, each dwelling unit consists of a bedroom and a living hall along with kitchen, uh, uh, a toilet, and a WC with a separate access from uh, the, both the rooms to toilet and WC. Uh, it is to be mentioned here that the typical dwelling uh, unit plan uh, given here complies to the, the National Building Code uh, 2016 space norms, which uh, uh, specifies uh, you know, uh, minimum sizes of uh, room uh, along with the height of the room, height of the kitchen, width of a staircase, et cetera, for EWS category. In addition to conformance to NBC 2016 space norm for EWS category, there are other uh, special features uh, included in the Lighthouse projects, uh, namely uh, the project uh, is to be developed uh, uh, under Griha Green Rating, uh, the use of uh, renewable resources in terms of rainwater harvesting and solar lighting is also uh, included uh, in the project, solid waste management, sewage treatment plan with recycling of water and firefighting services are also uh, as per uh, prevailing Indian standards and to bring sustainable practices. 
the overall technology uh, being used here is a hybrid uh, technology which comprises of a steel frame structure uh, with uh, walls uh, of a prefabricated sandwich panel system but before explaining this technology to you let me just uh, briefly touch upon the prevalent construction systems being used world over as you can see on the left hand side there are two pictures one is a load bearing structure which is primarily a load bearing uh, brick masonry wall or any other masonry wall uh, uh, along with cast in situ rcc slab so this is quite prevalent um, system um, uh, earlier and now this system is being replaced by uh, cast in situ rcc uh, framed structure and framed structure comprises of beam and columns uh, along with uh, cast in situ rcc slab so these two are the most prevalent system all over the world and uh, you all will agree with me that these systems um, uh, are time consuming at the same time there is a lot of wastage of material um, uh, they are dependent on labor um, generates a lot of dust and not amenable to the environment and it is high time that we uh, shift our gears from these uh, construction systems in vogue to something new which can help uh, build faster uh, without uh, compromising structure and functional performance. So here, uh, this is one uh, new system where we are using, uh, you know, the fabricated factory built steel um, uh, structure uh, for uh, the, 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 the frame along with the prefabricated sandwich panel system for walls. This prefabricated sandwich uh, system is uh, an innovative system which is being used uh, for the first time in India and these are factory made wall panels uh, replacing uh, you know uh, brick masonry um, uh, brick masonry and motor walling construction and this uh, sandwich panel system can be used as a load bearing and non load bearing uh, wall walling system but in this project it is being used along with the steel frame structure because uh, it is a high rise structure of steel plus 8 now let me explain the technologies in terms of various structural elements uh, being used in this particular project of uh, indoor uh, just to explain to you what does uh, structural element mean uh, any building can be divided into uh, two 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 structures one is superstructure and another one is substructure substructure is what we call uh, below ground level and above ground level is called superstructure so substructure comprises of a foundation followed by a, a column up to the plinth and above plinth starts your um, uh, superstructure. So this is called foundation and above uh, plinth what you have is a vertical member which is a load carrying uh, member which is called column. Then the horizontal member again it is a load carrying structural member which is called beam and this beam and column uh, together uh, makes a structural system. Basically this is the skeleton of any, any building. Okay, once the skeleton is made, uh, the floors, uh, uh, again, uh, the floors um, uh, may use uh, different kind of technology. Um, and then you have uh, the walls, and here we are using the, the, the innovative wall panels. So uh, the technology is being used for each of these structural elements will be explained in subsequent slide to all of you. Foundation, if we talk about foundation, uh, foundation, uh, we are keeping uh, conventional here uh, because of uh, the soil conditions and uh, uh, so foundation is greatly dependent on geotechnical investigation, bearing capacity of that region, um, along with the subsurface strata and water table. Uh, so for this project, uh, indoor being a rocky terrain, um, 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 the, the isolated footings and uh, combined RCC footings are uh, proposed um, along with the uh, RCC columns up to plinth height. Once you reach the plinth, uh, plinth level, all the columns are connected through plinth beam uh, at the, at the uh, plinth level. And uh, above plinth, uh, we uh, put um, you know uh, hot rolled uh, factory made build up sections which are of the steel, and then over that uh, slab is being cast, and walls are being uh, again factory made uh, sandwich panel walling system. So foundation is conventional, uh, as you will see in any other project um, comprising of RCC uh, footing. 
Uh, structural system, as I explained to you, structural system is nothing but a skeleton of a building comprising of beam and column. And as you can see, these, these are hot rolled steel uh, built up I sections, which are uh, fabricated in the factory, um, basically in a steel factory. So all these things being fabricated in the factory um, are brought to the site, uh, aligned, erected and um, assembled uh, to create a um, structure of this kind. And later you can uh, put the slabs and uh, walling system for this. Sometimes this system is also known as a pre-engineered building system. Uh, when you talk about floors or roof, uh, you will find here that um, we are using a deck slab. It is a composite kind of slab. Uh, this deck uh, slab comprises of a deck sheet, which is a profile sheet. If you see from here, this is a profile deck sheet uh, made up of steel, uh, galvanized steel. So you put a um, uh, steel deck sheet over which um, a nominal reinforcement is placed along with the um, concrete is screened uh, to construct a um, uh, floor. And this floor is also can, uh, we can be cast um, speedily because you don't require any shuttering here. And this deck sheet acts as a, a foam bunk. In this project, the innovation is uh, about um, uh, not only about the framing, um, steel structural framing system being used. Uh, in addition to this, we are using a very innovative uh, wall panel system, which is called uh, prefabricated sandwich panel system. These panels, as you can see here, uh, comprise, it is called sandwich panel system because there is a core, which you see here, this is a core, which is sandwiched between two layers. And these two layers are of uh, fiber cement board or calcium silicate board. And um, in between you fill it with the lightweight concrete. This lightweight concrete is again a special concrete, which is made of EPS granules. EPS is expanded polystyrene plus cement, fly ash, and some other uh, adhesive. Okay, and this core material is, um, you know, uh, posed in a slurry um, uh, state under pressure into the preset molds and these um, uh, uh, preset uh, molds are then uh, cured and then panels are uh, uh, made. So entire thing is done in the factory uh, and this is, this is how these are being stacked in the factory and uh, this is how they are being uh, put uh, as a wallet panel. Okay, so this is a steel frame uh, which comprises of uh, built up uh, factory made uh, steel uh, beam and columns and uh, the walls are of this um, prefabricated sandwich panel which comprises of uh, fiber cement board uh, layers with, with a core of lightweight comprising of um, elevated or lightweight concrete. A typical uh, manufacturing plant, if you want to know, uh, uh, has uh, these stages. Um, there are you know, uh, automatically there are uh, silos uh, in which uh, the, the, the ingredients for making this uh, sandwich panel are stored and uh, through a computer these uh, ingredients are uh, mixed uh, uh, mixed, uh, and uh, then uh, through a mixture they are poured in a preset molds and then uh, through vibration and uh, curing uh, these columns are stacked and then um, um, once the curing is complete they are ready uh, for packaging uh, and uh, shipping or transporting uh, for, to the sites for uh, election purposes. So this is a typical um, manufacturing plant, which is very simple. You have, um, uh, you know, um, mixing uh, all the materials uh, electronically through computer aided uh, center. And then, um, you know, in a preset mold, you mold, pour the material, uh, do the vibration, um, split the panels, do the curing, and then they are ready to move to the sites. Um, have a look at the typical uh, factory setup. It's a small factory setup. And as you can see, these are the, the molds in which, uh, you know, these are the preset molds uh, in which uh, elevated concrete uh, or a special type of concrete through computerized system is poured. And once this is poured, um, then uh, it looks like this. And then it is left for uh, curing. And then later, they are stacked here and ready for transport. Uh, the typical dimensions of this, again, this uh, can be customized as per customer needs, uh, but um, for the lighthouse project at Indoor, uh, the length of this um, um, panel uh, is uh, uh, up to a story height, which is 2.4 uh, uh, meet, uh, meters, and uh, the width of each panel is around 2 feet, 610 mm. Um, the thickness of each panel uh, varies from 50 to 250 mm, depending upon the, uh, the dimensions. Um, um, again, as I told you, these are 
customized panels and depending upon the application, whether you are using it for residential purposes or for any other purposes, the thickness can vary. For indoor project, the thickness of panel uh, being used is 120 mm for external walls and 90 mm for internal walls. Um, another important thing here is these uh, all these panels come with tongue and groove kind of system and they, they perfectly fit into each other uh, through slide and lock system. So these walls can be easily erected uh, at the site uh, with manually um, uh, without, with ease. Also, um, you know, wherever we have uh, L or T joint uh, at any joint, um, additional threading elements are also being uh, produced in the factory, which are 60 mm thick uh, to conceal those uh, joints and to encase the uh, steel structure. Uh, as far as weight of these panels are concerned, you can see the panels which we are using uh, in this particular project weigh from 74 uh, kgs to 135 kgs. The density of core is uh, 580 kg per meter cube um, and density of overall wall panel is 670 kg per meter cube. So 74 to 135 kg can be easily lifted uh, by, by a person uh, of, uh, the, 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 the si of uh, this size of panel, which is 3 meter height and uh, 600. 10 uh, millimeter uh, wide. Um, just to uh, give you more details about these panels, how these panels are being fixed here, you can see these panels are being fixed with uh, the, the soffit of a beam, which is RCC beam, um, uh, through a uh, U-type uh, channel, uh, uh, through this kind of double bars, which are inserted and then uh, grouted in the beam. If you look at the steel structure, the panels, as I already told you, tongue and groove system, so they can be, you know, fixed uh, in a slide, uh, the slide and lock, through slide and lock arrangement, then uh, there are th these red things which you see these are U-type channels which are used to hold these uh, wall panels with the steel structures and uh, you can also use additional clips which can be welded uh, with the steel columns and uh, beams to hold these panels firmly with the column and uh, beam floors, okay? And um, when you join these two panels together, um, these two panels together are joined in this fashion. Um, the double uh, wire at 45 degree um, is inserted in a you know core material and through that core material is inserted into these columns. So to have integral action, uh, you know, in addition to slide lock arrangement, both the panels are jointed together uh, through um, a double steel double bars, um, which is uh, you know uh, inserted uh, through a hammer uh, at a 45 degree. And because this being a lightweight concrete with the EPS granules, this this can be easily nailed by uh, through a hammer. So this is one jointing, and with the steel beam, if you want to put it. Um, you have to put U channels which are welded on the, the beam and then uh, you can put these panels. If you want to put it on a concrete beam, then uh, this is the kind of arrangement uh, you have to do. Then uh, typical L and uh, T joints, if you want to know, uh, this is a typical uh, T and L joint, wherever you have a joint. So in between the joint to plug the gap between the joints, uh, you have to fill it with the exterior gate super fine ready mix plaster. And um, you have to finish it with putty. Uh, and then um, uh, there, there is a tape of uh, anti-crack fiber tape, which is uh, put uh, to give it a uh, uniform smooth uh, surface. It is done so that there is no ingress of water uh, uh, through the the joints. Uh, advantages of these systems are plenty. First of all, this is a dry walling system, and in dry walling system, um, you are not using any water. And if you uh, see a typical uh, wall, brick wall construction, you see uh, mortar, water, labor, shuttering, um, and um, scaffolding is being used here. Uh, manually, you can just uh, put these uh, panels um, uh, with two or three persons. The entire wall can be erected within no time. And being dry, dry walling system, there is water conservation, and it brings speed to the construction. Sandwich panel system, as I told you, are very light in weight, um, and uh, being light in weight, this brings a source efficiency, better light. Um, you know, um, wall panels, um, you know, uh, give uh, contribute very less to the dead load, thereby economizing the whole structural uh, design and analysis. Foundations are also lighter, and uh, being a core of EPS or elevated concrete, um, uh, this is better as far as functional performance is concerned in terms of thermal. Uh, efficiency in terms of acoustics and energy efficiency as well. 
uh, essential requirements uh, of this uh, um, innovative technology is that uh, joint of these panels need to be carefully um, you know, seen and carefully detailed. They need to be perfectly logged because if you don't log them um, uh, properly, so there, 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 will, there may be precipitation of failure because if it is loosely connected, then one um, failure of one joint will lead to the failure of uh, uh, other joints. So the joints need to be properly properly locked uh, with cement glue, double bars, exterior gate, uh, super fine plaster and uh, the mechanism. And, um, you know, it may look um, slightly tedious, but once the, 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 the labor work, the, once your workforce is trained, it can be done within no time. Uh, secondly, um, um, you know, because these are factory made uh, uh, panels made in the factory, so you have for putting services, you need to um, do the cutting uh, and chiseling of panels and um, that also need to be done um, through a skilled workforce and you require uh, special tools and uh, machinery for this. Uh, for floors and roofs, uh, these panels can also be used as floor and uh, roofs, but for this particular project, uh, we are using a composite deck um, uh, slab or deck roof, but otherwise these panels can also be used as a uh, roof panel uh, with nominal reinforcement and uh, screen. Um, again, this project is uh, given uh, on a design and build basis and uh, the technology provider is Arising Japan Infra Private Limited uh, and uh, the agency who is executing the project is KPR, the project on the Private Limited NASIC. Uh, design and build basis uh, means here is that uh, the design uh, basis and the structural design along with analysis need to be carried out by the company uh, and the technology provider because it's a new technology and it is first time mass scale field and implementation so design is also proposed uh, by the by the agency but it has to comply with the contract document with the specifications being provided by the implementation agency and has to comply with national and international standard once the design is um, um, you know uh, done or completed then uh, the design uh, is being vetted by iits because being first time implementation of technology the, uh, for keeping uh, checks and balances the design being vetted by IITs. And once uh, they approve the design, the, the, the structural rights are given to the, the agency, um, which can then be converted into uh, the construction rights. So let me briefly tell you about the design basis, which is very important uh, part of any uh, project and uh, because it decides the, the, the size of your members, the, the um, reinforcement, if it is a RCC structure, then what kind of reinforcement you are using, if it is a steel structure, then what, what would be the, the dimensions of your joints, how you are you know, uh, connecting the joints, what, what kind of nut and bolts are required, what kind of anchor bolts and things of that are required. So you need to first prepare a design basis report and in design basis report, first of all, you have to spell out the, the kind of structure you are going to design. So here it is a RC steel hybrid structure because uh, um, few places at uh, you know um, uh, lift wells at chair uh, lift wells and uh, staircases wells are of RCC, and rest of the structure is. Um, um, uh, steel uh, beam column structure. So it is a hybrid structure of uh, steel and um, the RCC. Uh, also up to service structure, the foundation is purely RCC. So the code used is ICE. IS456 for RCC and for uh, uh, steel, the code used is IS800. So both the codes are to be incorporated uh, in the design basis. Uh, as I told you that um, indoor uh, being in a rocky terrain, the bearing capacity is very high, which is uh, 40 ton per meter square. However, the foundation depth is kept as minimum two meter because um, it's a high rise structure and to counter overturning a minimum depth of foundation has to be kept. Again, based on Indian standards. Um, foundation being RCC, so isolated and combined footings are being proposed here as per the relevant Indian standard, which is 1080. And uh, raft foundation is also proposed um, as per 2950. Um, now, to a certain loads, the, there are standards avail, uh, available, uh, live load, depending upon the use, you uh, find the live load. It is a residential structure, so live load is around 150 kg per meter square. And uh, then you have to calculate wind and earthquake load. So, wind load. 
you need to refer the 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 the, the, the wind hazard map uh, which is given at uh, in uh, at the right hand side of your uh, screen uh, which is a wind hazard map uh, taken from vulnerability atlas of india of pmtbc and uh, depending upon the location uh, you can find out the the basic wind speed so for in case of indore uh, the basic wind speed is 47 uh, meter per second and this basic wind speed is multiplied uh, with several modifiers um, you know based on the topography of the region based on the importance of the building based on the size and dimension of your building based on the risk uh, um, coefficient and uh, uh, you know based on these modifier and basic wind speed Speed, you can arrive at the um, design wind speed and wind pressures and th th those wind pressures are used um, for um, analysis and design of your structure. Earthquake is also very important and earthquake loads are also be taken in, in, into consideration as uh, you can see in this map India, this is again a map from uh, vulnerability atlas of India of uh, building materials and technology promotion council and this map is as per NBC uh, national building code of 2016. So India is divided into four zones starting from zone two uh, to zone five and um, uh, Indoor uh, falls in zone three. Um, and based on this zone, you have to calculate the lateral forces uh, for which lateral seismic forces for which your building need to be designed. Um, uh, and the calculation is as follows. What you have to do is you have to find out the design horizontal seismic coefficient, um, uh, which is a product of uh, your uh, zone and then uh, the type of building you are using and the importance of your building and the response reduction factor. Response reduction factor ensure the ductile behavior during uh, earthquakes. So here, response reduction factor being used is four because the building is designed as a dual system having ductile RCC structural walls and few spatial movement frames. Okay, so uh, with this, you can arrive at design seismic coefficient and that design seismic coefficient when multiplied with the seismic weight or the, the total weight of the building will give you the base share for which your building need to be designed. Also, when you do the analysis, boundary conditions are very important. So steel columns are assumed to be pinned at the top of the RC pedestal, um, that is uh, the plinth beam and some columns uh, and um, you know column beam, uh, beam uh, joints are uh, assumed as rigid joint uh, to cater for lateral loads um, and others as pin joints. So all kinds of jointing system are available um, for the design basis in this and uh, floor being DAX slab uh, with the uh, screed uh, so uh, diagram action is ensured. So, um, the rigid diagram, uh, rigid diagram action is uh, uh, um, accounted for in horizontal direction at um, the floor levels as per the IS one eight nine three code. The most important code when you are doing a design basis for earthquake is IS one eight nine three and one three nine two zero. So both the codes are to be taken into account when you are preparing the design basis report. And based on this design basis report, uh, you have to carry out the structural analysis and. And um, there are um, a number of codes uh, which need to be complied with. There is a the exhaustive list um, for calculation of loads. Uh, you have IS 875. Then there are different parts. Uh, and for earthquake load, uh, you have different code. The, for um, uh, structural steel, you have uh, IS 800. Uh, then uh, for um, RCC design, uh, you have IS456, which is the most important code uh, for um, RCC design. And then for um, reinforcement, you have a um, uh, code uh, IS1786. And for ductile detailing, as I told you, if you're doing for RCC structure, uh, then uh, there is a code uh, 13920. Otherwise, you can also refer 4326, <coughs> which gives you general guidelines for earthquake resistant design and construction. Uh, for foundation, again, there is an exhaustive list for uh, Indian standards, uh, depending upon the, the, the foundation you are using. So if you're using a rough foundation, then uh, we have a standard called 212950. And if you are using um, the foundation other than RAF, then uh, 1904 um, or 1080 is the standard. All these um, uh, standards need to be followed religiously because uh, they give you the guidelines and uh, provisions uh, to make your building, uh, uh, you know, uh, serviceable and durable. Uh, as well as uh, you know efficient 
so uh, depending upon these uh, load uh, conditions depending upon the design basis and uh, following all these codes and incorporating the provisions being given in these codes you can always use a, a cat software to create a model of your building so this is the model of the building which is uh, it is a 3d model you can also have a 2d model which is which can be prepared in any of the softwares there are a number of softwares nowadays available some of them are stat pro etap safe sap Abacus and any of the software can be used uh, for detailed structural analysis. And the structural analysis is carried out for worst possible load scenario and uh, the load, load combinations for which uh, you have to carry out the analysis are enlisted here. You will find here that there are um, 13 load combinations when you consider earthquake load and similarly for wind, there are um, 30 load combinations. For, so for these, um, for these so many load combinations, you have to carry out a structural analysis and then you have to do the design for the worst possible load scenario. Also, um, as per the codal requirements, um, uh, you have you can carry out either 2D analysis or uh, 3D analysis, and that analysis can be static, dynamic, linear, or non-linear. Mm, uh, there is another important uh, software which is frequently used is AutoCAD, which is used for drafting purposes uh, for making uh, architecture and structure drawings uh, uh, and uh, that software also we, we, we you know as uh, users we, we must have a uh, little knowledge of uh, autocad softwares and when you do the structural analysis and design the whole premise is to have um, you know limited state of collapse and limited state of serviceability so limited state of uh, collapse means that in um, during the service life of building no matter what what is the whatever is the force your building should never collapse it means there should not be any life threatening collapse uh, uh, during the service life of the building that is the so of the collapse of the building need to be avoided and accordingly we have to design uh, and incorporate factors and uh, other um, stipulations given in code another uh, thing is limited state of serviceability and no point of time your building should remain unserviceable okay so um, you know deflection criteria depths uh, joint details and all these things are to be designed based on these two uh, limited states and um, the codes guiding the codes for steel and um, uh, rcc design are uh, is 456 for rcc design and um, is 800 for steel uh, design now let me come to the construction sequence. Again, uh, construction sequence will be explained to you um, in terms of structural elements. Uh, again, structural elements can be divided into two, substructure and superstructure categories. Substructure comprises of foundation, whereas sub superstructure comprises of structure structural system which is a framing system then uh, floors and wall panel and uh, in the last i will show you how to do the uh, how to put services in these innovative uh, construction systems so first and foremost uh, thing is to you know uh, look at the structural drawing because the, the, the structural drawings will form the basis of uh, your construction activities which you are planning at the site so uh, this is a typical um, foundation layout and uh, this shows you uh, the basic foundation uh, um, uh, plan here as you can see these, these are the basic foundation pit and uh, then there, this is, these are the location of uh, columns and if you cut the section so the, the reinforcement in each column um, wherever you have a raft then um, what is the reinforcement in the raft that is also being given here how uh, this foundation is to be connected with the the plinth and the above column is also given in this uh, uh, table um, uh, in this drive so um, one has to refer to this uh, structural drawing uh, quite a few times to you know uh, translate this drawing at the uh, the site by you know uh, uh, doing the proper layout and uh, by properly marking the, the 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 center lines and center points of these columns and then uh, putting the, the the reinforcement putting the mold uh, shuttering putting the reinforcement uh, doing the casting and then um, reaching up to the plinth level um, uh, this is, uh, you know, over the footing, uh, uh, you will have a column. So this this layout shows you the, 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 the layout of the columns, which are directly coming over the, the footing. So you can see this. Uh, so these are the locations of the columns. So once you have uh, um, done the foundation uh, slab, then you have to put the columns over there. So these are the locations of the column. And accordingly, you have to put the reinforcement cage uh, of those columns. Okay. And uh, the schedule is also given. These columns can be categorized depending upon the, 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 the 
the, the kind of columns you have. So if you have, well, suppose this is a P1 column, and uh, then there are other kind of columns, so you can categorize and uh, depending upon, you can take the schedule of reinforcement. Uh, anchor bolts, uh, because um, here we are using RCC footing, uh, then RCC column up to plinth, and over that we are putting uh, uh, the steel columns. So anchor bolts, location of anchor bolts are also um, part of foundation uh, plan. So this slide shows you the anchor bolt and base plate details. So as you can see in this, uh, this uh, shows a typical uh, column, uh, um, you know, base plate detail with the anchor bolts. So they, these anchor bolts positions need to be fixed. By while you are um, you know, putting a column, um, you know, pedestal or a stem column uh, over your foundation slab. And how these uh, anchor bolts are to be put are given here. Uh, this is again a band of this kind is to be given and what is the height, um, what is this length and what is this length is again um, given uh, in the design. Uh, this is a plinth level uh, framing plan because uh, once you reach at the plinth level, it is always advisable to connect all the columns which are coming up to the plinth level, with, uh, you know, the, from the foundation slab, all the columns which are uh, coming at up to the plinth level, they need to be connected together at the plinth level. And, uh, you know, in order to have better seismic resistance, it is always ad advisable to connect all the, uh, the columns at the plinth level through plinth B. Uh, which, this will ensure box-like action, and in the event of an earthquake or any settlement, the entire structure will uh, uh, behave in unison uh, monolithically and ensure monolithic box-like action, which is uh, good for uh, you know uh, seismic uh, resistance. So this shows a typical uh, plinth uh, level plan. These are the you know, uh, having done that foundation slab, these are the, the columns, um, you know, the, the foundation columns, and uh, then these are the, the, the dotted line shows in the, uh, the plinth level, uh, the plinth beams. The uh, grade of the concrete which is to be used has to be pre decided depending upon the design. So, here M25, again, as I told you, that higher grade of concrete is being used. Normally, M25 and M30 grade of concrete is uh, used for RCC footing and uh, rough foundation and pin beam um, um, because the, the, these construction is being uh, done uh, below ground level. And sometimes, you know, because of ingress of water and because of uh, deleterious material available in the, 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 the soil, uh, you know. Uh, you need to have a uh, concrete grade or high concrete grade, which which is impermeable, which is durable, and which require and which you know uh, inhibits uh, in you know um, uh, corrosion of reinforcement. And um, you know you normally we go for mix design. So here also mix design is being done, and reinforcement seal also is, has to strictly comply with the code. And the code for um, reinforcement of uh, reinforcement seal is IS one seven eight six and. And um, here, uh, the steel uh, being used is uh, FE 500. 500 represents the yield strength of uh, the bar being used, which is 500 Newton per mm square. Concrete mix design is again done by uh, the academic institution. Uh, here, in this case, it, it is a engineering college in Indore. And you can see um, the advantage of doing mix design is that you can optimize the, the use of various materials, precious materials, I would say cement. So here, consumption of uh, cement can be optimized. You get, um, here you are using 350 kg per cubic meter cement for uh, M25. Uh, water cement ratio is also optimized along with aggregate and other ratios. So, um, of using nominal mix, we use this mix, which is obtained from the, the concrete mix design, which is uh, uh, 1 uh, is to 2.2 is to 3.5. Uh, normally, um, for M25, it is uh, 1 is to 1, 1 is to 2. And so instead of that, this is so that, that way you save a lot of material. Also, for early gain of strength, uh, you use a, a plasticizer. Uh, uh, so here also, the plasticizer is being used. And uh, sand being used is crushed stone sand. So it is, again, a manufacturing which is being used here. Uh, when you are doing a mass level application of uh, the concrete, uh, normally a batching plant is set up at the site and batching plant ensures uh, resource efficiency and optimization of building materials which is being used and help in uh, uh, producing uh, better quality concrete. So this is a computerized batching plant and uh, what you can see here is, um, uh, you know, through these uh, batch mixing, uh, you can mix various materials and uh, get the concrete uh, made and that 
complete, uh, um, you know, uh, these are the silos where material is being stored here, the aggregate are being stored and they are mixed and then uh, transported through these mixture, transit mixtures um, to the site. Um, the quality control um, lab is also established at the site uh, for immediately testing the, the, the concrete and other material which you, which, which, are, which is uh, coming to the site and uh, typical um, um, testing laboratory have um, various equipments. It has, you know, concrete, this is a concrete cube mold and this is a compression testing machine which helps in uh, ascertaining the grade of concrete you are using then for water absorption and for um, ascertaining the moisture contents you use or over and uh, in addition to this, you have um, a lot of other equipments like seats and all uh, to, you know, uh, find out, evaluate different uh, properties of the materials being used uh, at the site. Now let me come to the foundation because uh, it is a rocky uh, terrain, so um, you have to first excavate. So for excavate, you have to use mechanical excav excavators and sometimes you have to use drilling machines and all. If you encounter uh, rocks, so as you can see here, that this is a kind of drilling when you encounter a rock and you have to reach to two meter height, then you have to you know cut that rock um, through uh, these cutters, um, uh, cutters and mechanical excavator. So um, uh, the drawing is based on your structural drawings. You have to first to um, do the excavation and create a pit and in that pit you have to you know uh, um, create a layout of your entire um, you know pedestal foundation slab and uh, all those things and then uh, lay the enforcement uh, you can see here um, so um, uh, having done that uh, um, um, pit having uh, you know excavated that pit what uh, here the PCC is being lay, laid here as you can see and uh, then over PCC you will put the reinforcement and then you will the foundation slab and then you will do the, um, the, 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 the column to place so the foundation work starts with PCC laying and the uh, use of PCC is uh, just to level the ground so that uh, your foundation uh, is not laid on a undulated ground so PCC is nothing but plain cement concrete of um, low-grade uh, concrete, which is M10 in this case, and the thickness uh, specified here is 100 mm. Having laid that uh, PCC, what you do is um, you uh, lay the uh, you know uh, reinforcement cage for uh, footings. Okay, so here, as I told you, we are using a um, um, from, you know isolated footing as well as combined footing, uh, and we are also using raft in few places. And so this is how reinforcement is being played. And the vertical reinforcement which you see is the reinforcement of the column which will uh, uh, come up to the, the the ground level, up to the plinth level. And this reinforcement, vertical reinforcement, is also tied with the reinforcement of um, your uh, foundation so as to have continuity of reinforcement and so as to have monolithic action and um, you know structural integrity as far as load transfer is concerned from column to the uh, foundation slab so this is also very must and it has to be carefully uh, you know detailed so that um, these the, uh, you know, vertical bars are properly anchored with the um, the horizontal reinforcement of slab. So, having laid this reinforcement uh, of column and uh, um, you know foundation slab, uh, you have to pour the concrete. So, this is how uh, concrete is being done. You can see here, concreting is uh, being done for the foundation slab. And what you see in between, we have you know. Um, uh, in between we have a lift um, uh, well and a staircase uh, uh, well so wherever we have a staircase well and uh, lift wells there uh, the raft foundation is also provided because um, at staircases and at lift level load requirement is higher than uh, in the normal uh, areas of the building so wherever there, there are staircases um, these staircases are provided with the, the, the raft uh, foundation of additional thickness of 500 so you have a foundation isolated footing and then you have an additional rough wherever you have uh, um, um, you know our staircase well also there is another important thing which you should notice here because the entire thing is coming below ground level so all these exposed surfaces um, surfaces here are um, you know uh, uh, provided with coat stones so as to minimize the ingress of water. So it's a kind of waterproofing um, arrangement which is done uh, at the side by putting potai stone um, below ground level uh, on the exposed 
concrete surfaces. So here you see this is a shuttering and this is the reinforcement and here concrete is being poured and this is a Haitian cloth which is you know, which is a wet which is kept wet um, during the curing of this concrete. And um, this shows you um, a lift and a staircase well where you have additional raft um, uh, and um, and over that quota stone is being laid forward. Now, um, once you have, uh, 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 you know, have the foundation being, uh, foundation slab is being laid, this is isolated footing and here you have this raft, then you put the, the shuttering um, or formwork for the, the, the column. So this is the formwork for the column, reinforcement cage is then laid over this uh, and this reinforcement uh, already laid, uh, reinforcement which is connected with foundation, the reinforcement of this column is connected with this reinforcement um, through, through splices and through syrups. Sometimes it is welded as well, and then concrete is poured in uh, this up to the plinth height. Okay, and um, once you do it up to the plinth height, so you come uh, at the plinth level, then backfilling is done. Uh, at the plinth level, backfilling is uh, done, and then again, backfilling is uh, done um, in the layers of 200 mm with proper compaction with water so that the soil gets compacted. If you don't do this big backfilling properly at a later stage, uh, the soil may get settled. And once the soil gets settled, there will be a differential settlement uh, leading to the cracks in different parts of the building. Uh, so, uh, after doing the backfilling, you lay the reinforcement of these plinth beams. And as I told you, that all the columns at the plinth level are connected with this plinth uh, um, through these plinth beams at the plinth so to have monolithic, uh, um, uh, monolithic box like action uh, of the entire uh, superstructure. And uh, now this reinforcement will be terminated here with the anchor boards, and over which uh, you will put. Uh, um, the, you know, steel column which comes from the prefabricated steel column with a base plate which will come from the factory and will put over the uh, anchor boards. Uh, this is a typical slide which shows you this is a template uh, of the anchor bolts because you know uh, the, the base plate uh, comes um, you know welded uh, with the steel column uh, and means uh, from the factory so it has to be very accurate so a template is created and through and um, you, you see this is a dump, dumpy label which um, you know ensures the proper labeling of your column. Um, or, or proper labeling of uh, your anchor bolts, uh, okay? And then anchor bolts are normally put uh, through sleeves and sleeves are slightly more than the diameter of the slab. The idea is, you know, by putting these sleeves, you, you will do the grouting and then you will remove the sleeves, okay? So uh, this is how the, figure, the fixing of uh, anchor bolts with temp templates is being done. And uh, then once the base plate is fixed, this is how, this is a template plate just to show you that once you put a column with a base Split here, then this will be, be you know, um, um, fixed um, with the foundation through this nut and bolt arrangement. And the height, um, the length of this um, uh, anchor bolt um, within the column, uh, within the foundation, uh, is again designed and uh, uh, given um, as a part of structural design uh, depending upon the tire. Okay. And as I told you, then there is a sleeve, and then you have to grout this. Um, the, the, Anchor bolts in the the, 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 the the columns. Okay, so um, let me show you here. This is this is how uh, this is the shuttering of um, your plinth beam. And uh, once shuttering um, co co uh, concrete uh, pouring is done, uh, then uh, this this is how it looks like. So this is a plinth beam at the ground level, and over this your steel column uh, will be erected, which will come directly from the factory. Now let me come, uh, having done the foundation, let's come to the um, uh, structural system. And again, uh, here, um, the project is, has come up to the foundation level and very soon we will be starting erection of columns. So I will explain you uh, the structural systems and other details through drawings, sketches, and text because uh, the on-site uh, photographs are not available because that work is yet to start. So um, structural system is again, uh, as I've been repeatedly telling you, uh, is the uh, comprising of um, you know, built up I sections and these built up I sections are fabricated in the steel factory which are made from steel uh, sheet um, uh, through, uh, through machines and typically they are uh, hot rolled I sections. And so once you have beam and column I sections, they are erected, they are then connected um, um, properly through uh, base, uh, through gusset plates, angles and nut and bolts. And then uh, uh, you lay the slab and then do the wall um, panels, install the wall panels where we are using precast and system. 
Uh, this is again very important slide because the the whole premise of this structure uh, depends on how do you connect the foundation with the the superstructure, which is a steel column. So this anchor bolt um, plays a very important role. And so depending upon the jaya, the length, which is to be inserted within uh, the foundation pedestal, um, uh, and uh, what is the threaded length is decided as per design. So if you are using a 16 mm dia anchor bolt then uh, this length is um, 400 meter and the bend of 90 degree having a length of 100 uh, mm is must and this thickness uh, this length is around uh, 100 uh, mm so this need to be ensured so that there is no overturning and this is um, connected with this uh, rcc uh, you know the, the column properly and uh, giving a smooth transfer of loads and these anchor bolts if you look at the plan there are four anchor bolts um, and uh, i already showed you the template through the template, these anchor bolts are prefixed in the foundation and uh, cast with the, the, the concrete uh, column or pedestal stem column. And then once you erect the column, all you have to do is you have to you know, put the, the, the nut and bolts. Okay. Uh, then, uh, then column beam connection, uh, beam column connections, uh, how you are doing the column splicing, all these things need to be um, properly uh, designed as per uh, Indian standards. So this, slide, this particular slide shows you how the columns are being uh, uh, jointed together uh, in length. Okay, So if uh, you have to connect one column with the other column, this is how it is being done. So as you can see here, column are being spliced through these uh, nut and bolts there are uh, as you can see there are eight nut and bolts which are uh, put uh, on the the plates which are welded on the web portion of the the column so uh, the two columns in the length are connected together uh, through uh, the, the, the the base plates uh, through the plates and nut and bolts similarly if you have to connect the beam with the wall you know the, at the staircase wells and the life lift core wells you have a rcc shell wall and there you have a beam so how do we connect that steel beam with the column that is this detail and as you can see here um, you know you while casting the rcc structural element you have to put a base plate uh, through you know lug bars uh, and that steel plate is connected with the um, flat um, with the you know uh, beam uh, with the uh, web and flange of the beam uh, the, again with the uh, uh, you know, uh, web of the beam through nut and bolt. So this is the detail which is given and through a cleat angle. So you put an angle uh, and that uh, angle um, uh, is uh, you know connected with this base plate as well as with the, the web of the um, uh, beam uh, through nut and bolt. So that's how it is being connected and all these joints you know typical joints in the um, steel uh, beam column beam beam column column are to be uh, properly detailed designed and then uh, put inside now the beam column joints and uh, beam uh, column beam beam joints are again uh, can be designed in two um, categories one is a moment resting frame and one is a shear and moment resting frame so um, at few places you require uh, that the joint should uh, transfer movement as well as uh, shear so they, they are called shear and flexure connections and at few places you require only movement transfer so wherever you have a beam column connection uh, with movement um, uh, movement resting uh, you know connections so you have to what what you have to do you have to connect uh, the the beam and column both at the flange level and uh, at the web level through nut and bolts and uh, by um, you know putting a, a plate and both the, the, the um, in both the you know structural level that is beam and column so as you, you can see in this plan uh, as you can see in this sorry as you can see in this plan, um, uh, these are the nut and bolts which are being put uh, in the, the flange and web portion of uh, columns as over here. And if you want to create a shear connection, then what you have to do is you have to have a cleat angle, which is uh, um, uh, cle through cleat, uh, you uh, fix the web portion of the column uh, with the web portion of the beam. So this is called, uh, you, you know, only in the web you are doing and when you are creating a um, uh, moment connection then you have to fix it at the web as well as at the flange level. Um, 
there are very stringent requirements uh, as far as um, material specification of steel is concerned because uh, the, the, these are being fabricated in the, in the in the factory so you have to use a structural steel this is a hot rolled steel built up section so it it has to strictly conform to is 800 and is 7205 um, as regards fabrication and erection also um, whenever we do a fabrication in the free uh, in the factory there are tolerances for fabrication and dimensional accuracy so uh, again there is a standard is uh, 725 which talks about uh, tolerances similarly while erection what are the permissible tolerances um, we need to conform to uh, Indian standard uh, which is uh, is 12843 uh, as regards material, its transportation, its erection, um, there is again a code which is giving how to stack the material, how to transport, assemble, erect, align for all these material. Um, there are codes, um, primarily the code is IS 800, which need to be referred to um, for testing, quality, surface condition, productive treatment, other things. All uh, connection plates, um, um, you know, when, once you are erecting a steel column and it it is having a particular yield strength so your connection plates and nut and bolts should also have a similar um, yield strength otherwise what would happen connection will fail fast or the if there is um, you know their strength is less then that will fail fast so again there are codes which help you uh, deciding the yield strength of um, uh, um, you know uh, joint uh, plates angles and other things anchor bolts play a very important role they are also known as holding down bo bolts so uh, there is again uh, they, they are high strength bolts uh, having a um, yield strength of at least 250 in newton per mm square and there is again a code um, which need to be referred for that um, um, as I told you that for erection, you need to take uh, utmost precautions because the alignment of these steel columns is uh, at most important and um, wherever required, you need to weld um, these steel columns. Uh, so welding has to be done following a code. Um, for deck sheet, uh, because you're using a deck sheet, deck sheet also um, a particular grade of uh, steel is to be used uh, for um, the metal deck sheet. And whenever we erect these steel columns, uh, and framing structure you need to do proper bracing or shoring uh, um, uh, so as to provide little support um, to avoid any failure or any dislocation of uh, these um, you know, columns and beams and frames at the site um, uh, you know there should not be any gap in between so all the joints are to be fixed properly and uh, to be packed properly so that um, in, uh, in, a, uh, in a later case, there is uh, no loosening of joints and you, there is no ingress of water leading to leakages and other things. Uh, fabrication uh, is to be done at the site and it is not that you get the components and then you start erecting. You have to stack these, you have to first transport these material to the site. So there is a standard protocol which needs to be followed for transporting these components to the site in a trailer. Uh, and then, um, you know, erect them at the, the site uh, before erection, you have to stack these um, um, the fabricated components at the site, they should be properly numbered and arranged um, um, in, in such a fashion that, um, you know, depending upon the, 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 the block or depending upon the column, you can just uh, take that column and uh, start erecting it. Also, normally, uh, you have to have a um, stacking uh, at a, you know, clean site because these are steel columns and uh, they may be susceptible to, to, to corrosion um, because of water and other things so so you need to have it uh, at a site where water should not accumulate so the, the, the site where these are being stacked should be clean um, fasteners and small fittings shall also be stored under dry cover, under cover in dry condition and uh, any damage to the steel work during offloading and transport rotations need to be um, attended to and uh, there is again a standard uh, available for uh, restoring the damage um, because these are heavy, heavy sections and when you bring it to the site, um, there is a possibility that few of these uh, columns and beams uh, uh, or structures 
structural elements may get damaged um, during transportation or storage erection. So again, you need to follow the column, uh, follow the code. Uh, also, the anchor bolts and all wherever you are putting it with the concrete, you have to do the proper grouting, um, um, uh, and uh, you have to carry out the proper alignment. Uh, you know, you have to have it in proper uh, uh, plumb. Um, always when you um, put a column base plate uh, with the RCD concrete column, there, there, there is some space left, so that the space needs to be clean and um, you know, filled with the non shrink grout or, or with, a, with a stiff material. Now let me come to the, the steel columns, which are, uh, once you have done the foundation, the steel columns, which are to be erected. So this particular slide uh, shows you the steel column layout, and uh, these columns are properly numbered like C1, C2, C3. So the uh, C1, C2, C3 are of different sizes. So um, as you can see here, C1 has a web of this. This is the dimension of flange. So it is 350 by 10, it is 200 by 16. So these, uh, these numbers are being done here. And by referring this, uh, uh, drawing is structural drawing. Uh, you can uh, you can readily know that which column need to be erected there. So when uh, whenever you you erect a column, you see look for this uh, you know nomenclature of this uh, column, and to be doubly sure, you have to see this dimension and then erect it accordingly. And what you see here, these are the the, the lift course of RCC shear walls for uh, staircases and lift course. So um, after that, you have to put a slab and uh, the details of four uh, floor slab uh, are given in this slide. Uh, here we are using a deck slab. So uh, this is a, um, you know, uh, uh, this is factory made uh, beams which are erected at the site. And over this, what you do is you put a deck sheet and the typical deck sheet profile is uh, of this size of um, you know this kind. And it is a 0.9 mm uh, thick metal deck, steel deck sheet. Uh, and which is put over the, the, the beams with the required bracing. And then what you do is you put a nominal reinforcement um, as per IS456 and do a screed of 75 mm with M25 concrete, uh, which uh, create this kind of deck slab. And it is known as a deck slab. And uh, you know, using that sheet uh, avoids the, 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 the shuttering for the slab. So this these deck sheet slab can be laid very fast and it requires less amount of uh, concrete. It is all uh, screed concrete with nominal reinforcement. Uh, so you save uh, material uh, as well. Uh, then uh, this is a typical uh, for, uh, for floor framing plan. Once you have, uh, you know, before laying uh, the deck slab, you have to see the the, the, the flow uh, slopes. You have to maintain the proper slopes at the the floor level. So this uh, structural drawing shows you the slope slope level. So you have to maintain those uh, slope levels. Then uh, wherever you are getting a moment resting frame or wherever you are getting a shear resting frame, all those details are also being given here. So depending upon this drawing, you have to, um, you know, properly uh, lay your tax sheet and reinforcement and do the proper uh, connection before laying the reinforcement screen. Uh, so typical uh, floor, uh, floor uh, framing plan is uh, given here and uh, it also, you know, is supplied with the services. So wherever you have some fan box or any other services that also, that is also given in this um, plan so that that can also be put. A typical plan of laying of now let's move to wall panel and um, you know that this is this drawing shows the typical wall panel so as you see here uh, this is one panel this is another panel and depending upon the size of your uh, uh, building and size of your rooms and uh, size kind of joints you have you have this kind of t joint you have this kind of l joint this you have this kind of a small joint you have this kind of joint so for all these these are to be first numbered in the in the drawing and then depending Depending upon those number and depending upon that size and configuration, these are fabricated in the, the, the factory, those panels, and they are numbered in the factory and then, then brought to the site. And depending, depending upon those numbers, these wall panels are being uh, erected uh, through a slide uh, lock arrangement. Okay, so uh, this is one panel, this is another panel, and then wherever you have L and T joint, you have to put a cladding panel as well. Uh, so you know, through this drawing, you can uh, see the number of that panel and accordingly erect those panels. Um, the, 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 this slide shows that um, how, um, uh, you know, at uh, the 
wherever there is a joint uh, T joint or L joint, what you have to do because this is an I section and uh, uh, the uh, flange of I section will be seen, um, uh, you know, because uh, because of this, you have to put a cladding panel. So this is an additional cladding, uh, cladding panel, which is again uh, done in the factory. Uh, so this kind of uh, factory panel, uh, you know, for, um, you know, uh, panel is to be inserted here um, both at inside and outside so as to encase this um, you know exposed uh, flange of i section so it can occur either at the t or it can occur at the l so if it is at the l you have to put this kind of cladding um, here it, this is the cladding it can be done with the cladding panel here and here it you can do it with the, the, the concrete and here the, this kind of panel can be put so if you um, see it in uh, the section uh, this is a mid corner so mid corner is detailed like this if you see in section this is the edge so this is your original panel and then you have this especially made cladding panel which is put like this okay and if you have this kind of panel then uh, you have to put it like this now, uh, construction and installation of wall panels is again uh, very simple. What you have to do for once you have reached the plinth level, then you start erecting the beam and steel beam and columns. Then you put the deck sheet and um, cast the, the, the slab. And once you cast the slab, uh, you, your entire skeleton of the building is uh, ready. And uh, then only you start erecting these uh, wall panels. Okay. And for fixing of these uh, wall panels, you have to put the U channels on the floors. Um, and um, because so under these U channels only, through these U channels only, you can fix these wall panels. Okay, and these wall panels are erected in plumb position, and uh, the two panels are joined together uh, with the steel uh, double wars at forty-five degrees, and um, then um, the panels, um, you know, uh, at the, the floor level and at the top of the floor level are fixed with beams and columns uh, with the help of the steel dowels and those U clips, which I, those U clips, and then joints between these panels are. Fixed with super fine ready mix plaster, and um, then a putty is done, and anti crack fiber tape is being uh, put. For fixing electrical and plumbing surfaces, you have to cut groove like you do in normal construction through chisel, and you fix the pipes, um, you know, the plumbing pipes, electric, electrical pipes, and etc. And then you fill those grooves with super fine um, ready mix plaster. This is uh, different stages, as you can see. Uh, this is how this is a concrete building where uh, these panels are being uh, fixed. So this is typical panel of 600 uh, mm wide and with a tongue groove system. So you, you you put it them. You connect these two panels together through a double walls. With this also, you put uh, through a double wall. If you have a steel column, then you have to put a U clamp kind of thing, and uh, you finish this like this. So in a typical steel building, uh, 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 in indoor, we are going to have this kind of structure and. Uh, you can see so this is a beam uh, this is a beam this is a column which is uh, of steel um, uh, built up steel section of hot roll uh, steel and uh, this is your deck sheet over which your slab of floors are laid and once you lay this then you put this wall back and these um, openings can be cut either in the factory or you can cut it at the site and all these surfaces are concealed uh, within these wall panels and all these wall panels come with tongue and groove kind of slide and lock arrangement so they are being properly fixed and wherever you have these joints at these joints you will put a putty and t crack and a, um, uh, and a crowd okay and uh, wherever we have these joints because this eye section is protruding so what you do is you put a cladding panel as well Services, as I told you, that services is done uh, in a conventional method. So this particular slide uh, shows you uh, how you do the chising and filling. And once you do that chising and filling, it can always be uh, filled with uh, the grouting and all. And this is how it looks at the later. Then you can fix the tiles as you fix um, in conventional way. And uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, um, this is, um, uh, there are some other finishing items. So um, uh, I want to stress here that these innovative systems are compatible uh, to the the Indian um, the finishing items, so whether it is WC bath or it is vitrified tiles or any other tiles or UPVC frame or press steel door frame. So all these um, prevalent uh, finishing items uh, go well uh, with these uh, new innovative technologies as well. So you can put a quota stone for flooring, you can put ceramic tiles, vitrified tiles and um, you know, glazed panels uh, and all these things are being done in this project as well.
other infrastructure items which um, which are um, included in this project um, uh, besides you know social uh, and physical infrastructure um, uh, are you know stp uh, sewage treatment plant then uh, street light with led is being done here rain water harvesting and uh, you know, solid waste um, uh, management um, is also included also uh, provisions for firefighting uh, is being included in the project these are few finished building uh, uh, abroad, uh, and as you can see, any kind of shape uh, and any kind of building can be made uh, with this technology. Um, um, these precast uh, sandwich panel systems can be used standalone uh, for making a building, but uh, here being high rise, we have used hybrid structure uh, where the frame is uh, frame is of steel and uh, walls are of this innovative precast sandwich panel system. And uh, you know, schools, offices, uh, barracks. Uh, um, affordable housing, high-rise structures, boundary walls, hospital, uh, um, warehouses, parkings, any structure can be built with these technologies. Any architectural form can form can also be you know, uh, made uh, with these uh, kind of systems. Uh, right now, that, that is all for this project. If you want to see the live status, if you want to really see the progress and um, learn uh, about the various facets of uh, the, the, these technologies as it gets implemented at the site, you can visit uh, gstcindia.gov.in website and um, go to the tab of live labs where you will find the live status uh, of all these uh, lighthouse projects. So you can go to project at indoor uh, and uh, see the, 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 the pictures along with videos. I will also be covering uh, the other details of the project as and when it comes uh, through uh, lectures. In case of any query or in case of any question, you can always write to us or contact us on the following address, which is given here. And you can also write to me at sk at the bmtpc.org to know further details about this technology. Thank you very much.